Hi guys, this is GSNOM.com and I'm here with a review of the Nokia 8 Sirocco. Yes, I know we already reviewed the Nokia 8 a couple of months ago. Actually, more than a few months ago, it was this spring. And now here we are in the fall with the Nokia 8 Sirocco. Basically an upgraded version with a new type of design with curved edges, a slight camera bump and a change of the screen. It's now a P-OLED instead of the previous one. So the Nokia 8 Sirocco was launched this spring. It should be priced at around $579 on Amazon.com. And here we go. One of the few compact phones, the 16 to 9 aspect and just available in black. That's it, just black. It's small, it's compact, but it's also pretty heavy for its footprint. And it has a stainless steel frame, which kind of tends to cut into your palm that's the feeling you're getting it feels pretty abrasive to your palm but also increases the grip in spite of the grip increasing the phone is slightly slippery because it has so much curved glass now it's premium for sure material wise it looks pretty nice from the front nice from the back it's got ip67 certification and it kind of draws fingerprints on both the front and the back side now i feel that the buttons are too skinny here and not very comfy once again this frame kind of cuts into the palm on the display front it's a p oled 5.5 inch 2560 over 1440 pixels in action 16 to 9 and dual curved curved on both sides left and right now the nokia 8 had a smaller screen 5.3 inch and also similar resolution now if you're wondering about the experience we got you covered. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Okay, so we're going to use our typical sample, typical video sample, and that's what you get. So first of all, a bright and crisp image, good contrast, vivid colors, they really pop out, deep blacks. But if you look at it in landscape, at it in landscape it's pretty okay. However, when you're viewing something like, I don't know, a website or what have you, when you're looking at that, there is a slight gray or blue tint on both curved edges. So gray or blue tint, which becomes also annoying when you tilt the phone a bit and which also appeared on the Pixel 2 XL last year. Okay, so that's the viewing experience. Let's see how the screen did in our typical tests. We go here. These are the pixels on the screen under the microscope. It's got a pin pentile metric setup. And when we measure the brightness, we achieved a top level of 475 lux units, which means we surpassed Phones like the Nokia 7 Plus, Motorola Moto X4 or iPhone 7 Plus, we scored below the Nokia 8's 536 lux and also below the iPhone 7 and the Xiaomi Mi 5. Now the settings for the screen are pretty typical, I will not bore you with them. You can see them here, you got your wallpapers, your sleep, phone size, display size, glance view and brightness and of course night light. Now let's talk about the other specs. CPU wise, we're getting a last year Qualcomm Snapdragon 600, uh, excuse me, Qualcomm Snapdragon 835, which uh, also came on the Nokia 8, so it feels familiar. Uh, it's accompanied by 6 GB of RAM, 128 GB of storage, and nope, there's no expandable storage on this handset. In case you're wondering why the brightness is so high, if you tone it down a bit, you see those annoying lines, so we try to avoid it. So, once again, Snapdragon 835, 6GB RAM, 128GB storage, no micro SD, Adreno 540 GPU, and uh, actually no lag. No matter what we did, anything we installed, upgraded, looked at, played with, there was no trace of lag. We played PUBG Mobile, we played Riptide GP Renegade, and here's what the gaming experience was like. Okay, quick race, rush, and here we go. So while I'm playing, I will also talk to you about the benchmarks. In Antutu 6, for example, we beat the Huawei Mate 9 Pro and the Xiaomi Mi 5. Whoa, that was a bit odd. Okay, so once again, in Antutu 6, we beat the Huawei Mate 9 Pro and the Xiaomi Mi 5, while at the same time, we score below the uh, Google Pixel XL and also below the Huawei Honor 10, that's Antutu 6. In Antutu 7, we beat the Nokia 7 Plus, which was to be expected, and also the Xiaomi Mi A2 and the Zenfone 5, while at the same time, we score below the Huawei Honor 10 and the Huawei P20 Pro. Okay, now let's show some actual benchmarks. We're happy with the gaming, we're happy with PUBG, even though the metal frame kind of gets overheated every once in a while if you play a lot. 
Now, uh, what was I mentioning? Well, it's time for the Geekbench. We talked about Antutu. So here we go. This is Geekbench 4 in the multi-core test. We scored above the Xiaomi Mi 6, Huawei Honor 10 and the Nokia 8. But at the same time, we scored the... So let's see. With a higher score, we managed to beat the Nokia 8 for sure. Xiaomi Mi 6 and uh, Huawei Honor 10. But we scored uh, below the Huawei Mate 10 Pro and the Galaxy Note 8. Well, other than that, we have uh, also some graphical benchmarks. So let's check those out. I'm talking about uh, the famous slingshot test, which should be here somewhere. Okay, so we did the OpenGLS and the Vulkan test, and let's see what came out of that experience. So in slingshot, we beat the Galaxy Note 9, shocking as it may seem, and also the Galaxy S9 Plus plus the Nokia 8. I know it's a shocker, but somehow, graphically, this CPU and GPU combo is nice. And still we score below the HTC U11 and the Xperia XZ1 Compact, so performance is actually not bad. When it comes to the temperature though, there is some overheating. So 40.1 degrees Celsius achieved in Riptide GP Renegade and it actually feels a bit more on the frame when you're playing. And in benchmarks a bit higher, 42.8 degrees Celsius in GFX Bench, so slight frame heat and uh, can become bothersome in long gaming sessions. On the battery front, this tiny little phone has a 3260 mAh battery, while the Nokia 8 before it had a smaller one, 3090, so an upgrade is welcome. It's got a glass back, which warrants wireless charging with QI technology, and uh, with 30 minutes of charging, you're supposed to get 50% charge, and guess what? It's actually real. Now, uh, if you want to talk about the Battery's uh, life. So let's see how we did in this aspect. Okay, we have lots of features here, lots of tests to swift through. We did PC mark, we did the uh, continuous usage, we did uh, also HD video playback in a loop, and we achieved a time of 12 hours and 42 minutes. So you can play about one whole season of Netflix show with 12 hours 42 minutes of. HD video playback. It beats Nokia 8 10 hours 53 minutes, it beats Galaxy S9 Plus, it beats the iPhone 7 but scores below the Galaxy S8, Xperia X8 II and Galaxy S7 Edge. That's the first experience, the video playback one. Now if you go to PC Mark, you got the work battery life which is 8 hours 31 minutes. I would say it's rather okay but just okay. It may be better than the Google Pixel 2 XL and also better than the Nokia 8 7 hours and 7 minutes, but it's below the Galaxy Note 8, Galaxy S7 Edge, and even the famous Xiaomi Pocophone F1. On the charging front, things are rather standard with 1 hour 52 minutes, they're generic, the equal of the Galaxy S7, and the promise of 50% uh, uh, charge in 30 minutes kind of stays true. You actually get 49% after 30 minutes of charging, believe me, I've actually tested it. The battery settings are typical, optimization and battery saver, and now we move on to the acoustics. So, even though we have a huge earpiece here at the top, we're actually using this small speaker here for the music. We also have three microphones and the promise of 24-bit OZO acoustics. Of course, we're relying on stock software, that's why we're playing with Google Play Music. So we go here, you got your settings, you got your equalizer, you got Snapdragon Audio Plus, genre customization, five custom channels and more. I'm going to leave that aside and actually play some tunes. Okay, so first thing I noticed, you can easily hold the phone in landscape without covering the speaker, so that's nice. Also, a very loud speaker, considering it's a singular one and it's placed at the bottom of the phone for a single speaker, it's quite loud. Also, nice bass and no distortion, no unpleasant vibration, warm voice and all that, so a positive aspect for the acoustics. Now, we also measure the decibels with the uh, first underwhelming 82.2 decibels at the front and back with an acoustic sample. It may beat the Huawei P20 Lite and the Xperia XZ2, but it doesn't hold a candle to the Nokia 8 83.6 decibels, also get beaten by the Nokia 6.1. However, in games you go as high as 104.9 decibels. It's the second place phone all time. I myself have tested 200 phones, this is second place. 
so it's very loud in games it's second just to the nokia 8 believe it or not and that one scores a crazy 107.1 decibels the headphones were pretty loud clear and comfy uh, close to the definition of premium now if you want to talk about the cameras we have a combo at the back there are two cameras here it's a dual camera with a dual tone flash it's a combo of 12 megapixel and 13 megapixel the 12 megapixel camera has a wide lens and the 13 megapixel camera has a tele lens and you're also getting size optics dual tone flash 2x optical zoom and that's the back side at the front we've got a uh, let's see uh only a 5 megapixel camera it's a bit of a shock because the predecessor the nokia 8 had an impressive camera at front 13 megapixel that did 4k video yes front camera 4k video this time only 5 megapixel a downgrade basically okay so the camera ui is pretty typical i'm talking here about a stock experience with some nokia customizations you got 2x optical zoom got your picture in picture you got your ar masks you got your motion pics some beautification effects extra options here there's auto hdr which is kind of annoying because i couldn't find the actual hdr anywhere you got a pro mode with settings for the white balance, ISO, exposure and whatnot. Let's actually decrease the exposure. Okay, now I've got the live bokeh, which is basically portrait, and that's about it. Now let's go to the actual gallery and see what the pics are all about. Okay, so I promised you pictures. We actually have a lot of them, including some that have burgers in them, and also a lot of colors. So here we go. These shots were taken on a reasonably sunny day, it's still September, it's not August anymore. And what bothered me the most was the lack of a proper HDR option, a separate one from the auto one, as normal phones have. Either I couldn't find it or there's nowhere to be found. Well, actually, if you have the Pro version activated, you can leave HDR there on, but that's another thing. So, in general, I was happy with the color calibration. The sky is finally blue, not white, as I've seen on other phones. And actually, the zoom isn't exactly bad even though in the distance the details are a bit uh, slim because we do have a smaller resolution compared to 20 megapixel cameras for example okay so color calibration is okay clarity is nice there are many shots that you feel would be taken with an iphone 8 that's the best compliment i can give here the selfies were underwhelming because they were a bit blurry great red hue so so far we have an excellent blue and excellent red and uh, I found some problems with the bokeh shots. It takes a lot to take a proper bokeh. And when you make it, you make it. But it takes too many attempts. Even more selfies with uh, a weird dynamic range behind me. I would say the face texture is okay. And also the skin texture, the clothes are okay. But I've seen much better. It's not the 5 megapixel resolution. I've seen better selfies even with 5 megapixel cameras and actually too many of them are blurry and that's annoying here we have the double picture thing and also the picture in picture just in case you're ever going to use it well i'm not exactly the kind who would once again excellent clarity and colors those are the best aspects here and yes we also play with the bokeh effect to more or less better results here we have more shots and here's one that we actually made in a pretty nice manner and you can actually see it signaled there so while it's a pretty okay bokeh it takes too many attempts and is not as strong as i've seen on other phones out there don't get me wrong you can pull off some very nice shots with this phone but uh, if you want proper selfies this is not exactly it however the portrait bokeh selfies are actually kind of nice. Forget my threatening look. These uh, portrait selfies are cute, but normal ones are not. So in the end, the best things here are the colors and the clarity, and that's about it. That's the daytime capture, and I feel that this phone could rival something like, let's say, Samsung Galaxy A8 2018, Huawei Honor 10, and it beats the Nokia 8 at least at first sight. Now, if you want to talk about low light shots, here we are. Now, I feel that the flash made things a bit too white. You can see it here, it exaggerates a bit with the white. We have a pretty solid zoom when you start to zoom in onto objects. This is actually the panel here and you zoom in and voila, quite impressive. Uh, I would say that the street light halos have an okay size. Colors remain pretty good. There's no weird pink, blue, red, or gold. It's a normal level of yellow. And the halos have decent size. 
Once again, the zoom is actually kind of great on this phone and it was also great on the Nokia 7 Plus, so uh, Nokia pulls off some pretty nice zooms. Somehow I feel that this is superior to the Asus Zenfone 5, probably also the Zenfone 5Z, and it's brighter than the Nokia 7 Plus, that's my impression. And the Nokia 8 made the low light shots a bit pink, this one, the Sirocco, does not, so that's a plus. Now on the video front, things were at 29 frames per second, full HD, 20 mega per second, or you can go 4K. We start with the stabilization test. Oh, by the way, the microphone is crazy good. We have three microphones with Ozo technology and it, well, it actually shows. The worst things about the video is the sudden exposure change, lack of stabilization, but at least there's no refocusing. Things may get shaky, but even with that, I feel they're improved over the Nokia 8, which had a horrid stabilization. Here are some more problems with the exposure. Pretty decent colors, I would say, nice clarity. And perfect microphone, believe me, if you're going for concerts, this is it. Now, when it comes to the zoom, I would say it's a so-so affair. It tends to refocus and get blurred, even after 2x or so. Some dynamic range problems. And we should also have a 4K video here with more colors. Dynamic range problems in the background because it's a bit burnt. Good clarity overall. And I was actually surprised, not by the main camera capture, but by the selfie camera capture. We also used it. And that's what it produced. 5 megapixel, full HD most likely. Yes, I know, overexposure and a bit of burn, but to be honest, not that bad. Okay, fake texture, color, what have you. Even more shots here with color again. I remember the Nokia 8 did the sacrilege of taking a poor 4K video. Nobody does that. Well, this one solves many of the problems. So I would say it's once again on a Zenfone 5 level uh, or also the Nokia 7 Plus level or even a bit more. That's daytime, lacking stabilization. We go to the low light and the video looks like this. There are a lot of artifacts and reflections. There is a lot of flickering and blur, but the colors are actually quite good. Pretty nice brightness, not a bad zoom, big street halos, and once again, colors are the highlight. Of course, I know everything is shaky, but at least we got the clarity and the colors. And this video is actually better illustrating of that aspect. So once again, it beats the Nokia 8 in a few regards. So it's sort of an Nokia 8S or even more in those areas. We're done with the camera. It should be able to rival the Galaxy A8 2018, which I said that beat the Nokia 8. Now we go to the connectivity. There are things you may easily predict. We got the USB Type-C port here. We got LTE category 12. We got Wi-Fi A, B, G, N, A, C with MIMO. GPS, GLONASS, uh, BDS, ANT+, NFC, Bluetooth 5.0. There are dual SIM slots available, three microphone, and believe me when I say we took and uh, did some perfect calls with this phone, really believe me. Uh, Nokia actually invented the GSM phone and they have three microphones, they got the Ozo thing, so everything is going well for them call-wise. Speed test also kind of nice. Wi-Fi got us as high as 429 mega per second in download and 22.6 mega per second in upload, while 4G brought us to a level of 105 mega per second in download and up to 61.1 in upload so i would say thumbs up for connectivity now let's talk about the software now as far as the software is concerned we're running on a clean android oreo experience this is part of the android one experience actually and here we go this handset is based on android 8.1.0 with a clean experience, there is the Google feed in the leftmost area. There is multitasking here as the carousel and it also handles split screen as you can see for yourself here. And you can split the screen into and do whatever you like on both halves. Other than that, typical stuff, wallpapers, widgets and settings, all of them stock. Swipe down and you got notifications and quick settings. And the pre-installed apps list is pretty okay, no bloatware, about 25 apps or so. You got your calendar, calculator, drive, duo, files, Google, keep, play music, play games, play store, and that's about it. 
Other than that, if you go to the settings, they're also pretty straightforward. We got security, we got connected devices, apps, notifications, battery, display, sound, system, and so forth. The fingerprint scanner at the back is pretty accurate and pretty fast to unlock the device. And that's all she wrote. So it's time for the verdict. This is the Nokia 8 Sirocco, sort of a Nokia 8S if you really want to rename it in any sort of fashion. On the pro side, this device offers nice looks, a pretty okay display, uh, runs games fine. I'm talking about PUBG at least, PUBG Mobile, good performance, a solid battery, superb set of microphones and solid speaker, better camera than the Nokia 8. Great picture colors, clean OS, and uh, quite okay video selfies. Now, if you're wondering about the cons, those are the pros earlier. On the cons side, not very comfy on account of the cutting frame. Uh, also, it tends to slip a bit and the backside gets uh, uh, dirty with prints and grease. The screen, if you look at its edges, it's rather grayish or bluish, especially on a white background. You'll notice that aspect and also the frame gets a bit overheated in long session of games bokeh was unimpressive details in the shots are pretty poor at times and stabilization is certainly not the best in the biz on this handset now if you want a compact phone which offers 2017 level performance and a flagship level performance actually this is basically it it's gotten cheaper now uh, it's obvious that you're going to buy this phone, not the Nokia 8, there's no reason to buy that one, it's superior in the camera, battery and uh, even the performance a bit, great acoustic, so it's a media phone, it's great to record concerts, to play concerts, do some video and pics and that's about it, but use a case. Be sure to use a case to get rid of the cutting frame, the slippery part, the grease part, if you're not getting a case, you will certainly drop the phone, lose the phone or not appreciate it fully. So this has been our review at gsnm.com for the Nokia 8 Sirocco, a bit of a fashion phone, a bit of a multimedia phone, definitely one that is going to record a few concerts over the next year or so. At least they come out with the long expected Pentalens phone. This is it from us, bye bye.